In Toronto, a June ritual unfolds. Welcome to the Red Hot Pride Prize. The queer high school prom. Off limits for everyone else. For three lives that briefly intertwine here, this is their story. Adina, two words why you want to be king. Okay, one word. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. As the rabbi's daughter, they expected me to be the same as everyone else. Not just to be one of the kids, but to be the model child at the school and to conform to exactly what the school wanted. And I did the exact opposite. Well, I never thought about it. It was never something that I sat at home and thought, oh, you're gay. It didn't happen until probably when I was 15, 16, you know? But what hurt is that people had already made my choice before I could even come out. My mom doesn't like gay people at all. I know she's my mom, and I love her and stuff like that, but she's another person who I just look at that makes some of her big remarks and just think, okay, you know what, I'm at a higher level than that, so just move on with my life. Whitby, Ontario, a manicured place on the outskirts of Toronto, where Adam lives with his family. Living in a small town and going to high school there were a couple of the hardest years of my life. Because at times I remember coming home and just bawling. I basically had nowhere to go or nowhere to talk to, and I was left to fend for myself. For the three years that I was here, it was living hell. This place was like a jail, like it's so badly wanted to leave and my parents wanted me to stay here. I had seen a guidance counselor and I had told him that I wasn't feeling really good about myself because I felt different from everyone else. So he brought in the two popular boys in the school at that time and Maybe they could teach me how to walk normal. So, of course, how I walk, I always have like the little, the hips and, uh, and I, I did this a lot when I was younger. My hand was always like this and my mom would always be slapping it down. But anyways, uh, they, they walk like, you know, they had the big baggy jeans and the big sweaters. So they were like, <laughs> you know, just whatever, acting like thugs. And, uh, so they got me trying to walk like this. So I'm walking like this down the hallway. And um, it didn't last for that long because I did it that once. And I don't think I ever carried it on again. I still walk the same, my arm's still like this. I look back on it now and when it just, it was, oh, it was awful. Like, it is humiliating that somebody would actually do that and try to change the person that I was. Like, they were probably laughing inside and they thought it was a big joke. But over the years, corridor jokes escalate into something else. The breaking point will come after a teacher's impromptu comment in the classroom. He brought up that if you're going to accept homosexuality, then you might as well accept bestiality in Paul Bernardo. A school investigation, an apology from the teacher, but Adam's parents decide it's not enough. So then you start thinking, okay, what kind of a school do, do I have my son in? Where, you know, he constantly gets ridiculed. Now, not only from the students, but now the teachers can do it too. And that to me was a turning point about, I, I have to get him out of there. In East End Toronto, this church serves the city's gay community. And tucked away in the basement, in a location kept secret by the Toronto School Board, is a refuge for queer teenagers. Gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgendered, they come here to attend a high school program known simply as Triangle. Who knows the history of the Triangle? Adina does. Okay. 
Lots of people do. Richard, what's the history of the triangle? The history of the triangle was when the triangle was placed on all homosexuals in the Holocaust to identify them. What color? It was fuchsia. Pink. Yeah. Why do you think they used pink for gay man? Why like not like, you know? Girly color? Because it's a girly color, absolutely, right? So guys are supposed to be strong and masculine, so it was an attempt to shame them. There's still homophobia in the world, and these kids are getting the brunt of it. They're actually being beaten, they get nasty notes in their locker, they get threats of death, and that's why we're needed. They come here as a safe haven, a place to gain some solid identity for themselves, and feel normal as well. Um, why is it important that we know these stories? Because how it was back then, they, mm -hmm. they weren't allowed to be so open and express themselves for who they were, so I have to realize that I, I'm lucky in a way. Yeah, well, that's a nice way of putting it. Friday evening, sunset. North Toronto feels like another world. A world defined by Jewish rules and ritual. Strict religious laws with little room for deviation. Adina, in general, I commend you. You do a lot more reading of newspapers in general than I do at all. What else is new? You, you don't understand half of it. You're like, politics, what? What well, does that mean? Adina, I'm also half blind, I mean. You're, you're also great. politically inept. On the That's eve true. of Shabbat, the Jewish Sabbath, Adina is expected to help her mother prepare the family table, especially after complications from surgery left Lori unable to lift her neck. I don't mind, but you do know that when you set a, a table, you don't put the knife and the fork on the same side. Do I care? That's social etiquette. Sorry, I skipped home ec. She sat down one Friday night on the couch, and she said, Mom, I've got something to tell you, but it's going to be really hard. She was, I mean, it took her about 20 minutes to calm down. I started checking down, and I was like, um, 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 I'm bisexual. And then a week later, um, she's like, she started talking to me about if I get, you know, when I get married. And I'm like, I'm not getting married. And then a week later, I was like, you know what, screw it. <laughs> Ima, I'm a lesbian, okay? I'm not getting married. And then she went and told my father. Adina's father is usually home for this weekly religious tradition, but he's not ready to appear on camera or talk publicly about his daughter's sexuality. When my husband found out, I mean, it was similar to me in that he was hoping and praying it was a phase, simply because it's difficult to be Jewish and also be lesbian. Adina and my husband are unbelievably close and he really pulled back. He didn't talk about it a lot, and he couldn't, but he really pulled back. That's medium? Yeah, it's good. He hasn't even talked to me. He's, you know, talked to my mother and had her talk to me. But for two months, it was just a total cold shoulder. And I'd walk by, and maybe, you know, he'd grunt that I, you know, to acknowledge that I'm, I exist. But we wouldn't talk. And we just, it was always this really weird tension between us. Okay, you okay. get it? Yep. When were you aware, though, that you liked girls? Probably 12. So at your bat mitzvah? Yeah. So why did you dance with all the boys? Because I was expected to. Supposed to be the good little rabbi's daughter who's going to get married to a nice Jewish man and have 2.5 kids and live in a, you know, in a house with a white picket fence and a dog. She wants her to stand up on a big pedestal and shout out to the world. I'm a lesbian, accept me, love me. She sticks out like a sore thumb, and everybody knows who she is. So my husband didn't want that kind of flack, and he banned her from coming to synagogue. He has a very prominent role in the Jewish community, and he feels that if people find out that she's lesbian, that it will have a major impact on him as a very important Jewish leader in the community.
Monday morning, and Richard's got a plan. The wind, you're the He's fed up with the chaos at home. He can't keep up with the work at school. Jesus, you are here. Safe haven or not, he's dropping out of Triangle. This light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. He's got a new this job at a hair salon where he hopes to use the money to get a place with his first serious boyfriend. And say goodbye to the apartment he shares with his mother and stepfather Bill. No more setting up camp in the junk room. Well, this is my room when I sleep over here, which I don't do very often, actually. Um, but that's the futon I used to sleep on, so I can at least have some privacy to myself which is, by, like, again, so crappy by the looks of it. But this is my space. My personal space, my privacy, which isn't really much to call it, actually. But I have to say it's better than the living room. Lunchtime, Richard heads back to Triangle to clear out his locker. And everything. So what do you this Okay, I want to tell you, this is actually really funny. He's 21. Oh. And we're getting a place together, which I think is so cool. That's so cool. And he's really good looking. Actually, I think I have a picture of him. It's just even pathetic. <laughs> you can't really see it that well, but he's so adorable. He's not bad. Oh, he's cute. He's so cute. So um, they pay you well? Oh, yeah. I get paid $400 a week. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. No wonder you're not coming back to school. <laughs> But you really are going to commit to finish. Yeah, finishing definitely. It. I need to go back to school. Well, you do. Don't get hooked into the money thing. I know, I know. it's really good, but it's. Next year is going to be the year that I crack down. Like, I'm going to like, be so dedicated. Yeah, yeah, so, like, committed to absolutely everything. So, I Richard, just take one step at a time, okay? Why <laughs> Because I know sometimes you get, you know, all these plans, and then it's harder to follow through if you don't just take If you're going to talk, talk, step, walk Yeah, <laughs> take one step at a time here, okay? Are you dropping out? I am. Why? Because the school wasn't for me. Like, even when she catches wind of his plan, Richard's best friend Denise rushes over to confront him. I always, with my marks, it'd be low, you know what I mean? And I'd always get in shit, I'd always get suspended. That was because you didn't record enough. I know. You're not going to want to go back next year. I Obviously, think I will. if you're doing so good now and you're like, you have a job and everything. That's the thing. Like, as my best friend Denise, I don't want you to think like that. And when I'm telling you I'm going back to school next year, I want you to believe me. School means everything to me. With his stepfather, Bill, away at work, Richard psychs himself up to let his mother in on his new plan. He's moving out to live with his boyfriend, Pierre, someone she's never met. Someone you bring him over here so I can meet him. Why do you want to meet him? Well, geez, Richard, I don't know. I met my daughter's boyfriend. Don't you think I have a right to meet my son's boyfriend? <laughs> well, yeah, but I know the way you are. Like, well, like how do you feel? Listen. Never refuse to answer that. Please, man. No, I can't, Richard. But I want you no, to. No, I can't. Why? Because you know, you know that it upsets me. Mm -hmm. Because I thought I'd done better. I thought I brought you and Crystal up better for the last twelve years by myself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it hurts that your the lifestyle that you have. I understand what you're going through, but because I have feelings that I can't control, and you know that I'm your son and that I'm gay, why can't you change that? In my opinion, I feel like I failed. But you didn't fail. Well. Because the way I look at my life right now, I'm like, wow. But the way I was. No, before, I'm, not, I'm happy that you're, you're. I'm happy that your life is going better for you, and I have to accept who you are and what you are. You don't have to. I want no, you to. No, I have to. I'm your mother. I mean, come on, I have to. And I love you. Okay. What do you want me to do? Like, I'm so nervous about bringing Pierre here. You know, Bill will say something. 
I don't know. But I just, I want you guys to meet him. Okay, bring him over, but I, I can't guarantee anything from Bill. You know that. I, I, can't, I, I can't tell Bill what to say or what not to say. Mm -hmm. In the heart of the gay district in Toronto, they are an odd couple. Adina has just gotten reacquainted with Ryan, an old friend from her father's synagogue. I remember like way back when you were younger, running around like really, really happy and smiling and like being a little rabbi's daughter and you had like the blonde hair and the glasses and this smiling face and the dress and then I see you in army attire, ripped fishnet. I remember you as like, you know, the kid with the blue hair who everyone was telling me was gay when I was like eight. Did you ever get like beat up or like anything or like harassment, like harassment central? Like I know that you're a triangle now. And Whatever, but like. So the reason I actually left to go to Triangle was that at my old school, a social worker sat me down one day and said, Adina, you need to stop talking about the gay stuff because we think the words, the things you have said have had a strong influence on people. And I'm like, are you accusing me of converting people? And they're <laughs> like, well, we wouldn't use that word, but I guess so. I stood up, turned around, slammed the door and left. I was I really trying. angry with the principal and the yeah, social worker. Sure. And it didn't make sense to me that she was at a school for troubled kids and um, they were gonna toss out a troubled kid just for saying that she was lesbian. Adina had a really hard time in school in general and she never felt that she quite fit in. And I'd always feel like the outsider because I'd be there, hang out with them, and they'd be whispering jokes to each other, and I pretended I didn't notice, but I always did. It got to the point where I just didn't want to be at school, and I threatened to kill myself and tried to kill myself just so I wouldn't have to be there. I couldn't face it. Looking back on it, I didn't want to die. I just wanted to escape. I just couldn't deal with it. You know, all the pressure and all the stress and feeling like I didn't belong everywhere. It's the end of another long day at the hair salon, and Richard is nervous. His boyfriend, Pierre, is late. Now that I found Pierre, the feelings that I get from him, it's like the feelings that I never really had when I was growing up. Having the feeling of being loved, now that I actually do have that, I want to hold on to it and not let it go. The two boys have been seeing each other almost daily for a month, and Richard's still not ready to take him home to meet Mom. Instead, they head over to see his best friend, Denise. It's a kind of dry run. <laughs> hey. Okay. Well, Denise doing? and Richard are not only best friends, they share a special bond. His stepfather, Bill, is also Denise's biological father, an ex-husband of Denise's mother, Penny. So what have you guys been up to lately? We spent the weekend together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And? He came out to his roommates yeah. and was there. What you mean they didn't know? No, well, I think that they kind of knew with, you know, having, the heck is. having, you know, <laughs> having <laughs> Richard over all the time. Yeah. Like, I just told m my mom a few weeks ago, actually. So what'd she say? Well, she's still a bit reluctant to even talk about it, but she's okay, I think, because she has, she has a, a gay brother in Toronto. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So what about your dad? My dad, actually, he passed away two years ago. He gave the image of being very homophobic, but with our last conversation, right before I left, uh, for Korea, he he accepted me like for our last conversation. I thank God for that, that that happened. Yeah. That's so nice. Uh, really? Would you want to go to eat after? Or... For Adam, it's just another lonely night. I met Shy Guy 911 like 
a week ago, so it's still pretty new. So I don't think anything's gonna happen though because I'm not really comfortable with meeting people over the net anymore. I just ended up meeting really older men and they lied and and plus I was realizing that I was putting myself in danger getting into people's cars that I hardly even know that I've chatted to for like two days. Nobody like touched me or did anything like that. It was just that they were weirdos. The thing is with me, since I've come out, I've never been on um, an official date, like go for a walk on the beach or <laughs> go to a restaurant. So I hope that one day a guy will come up to me and ask me to go to a restaurant and he'll take me home and then I'll just get the kiss and then that's it. Then I'll know right then and there that this guy is has some class and he wants to get to know me and, and it hasn't happened yet, so. <laughs> Adina spreads her gospel in the neighborhood with the help of her accomplice, Ryan. She's putting up posters for a controversial film playing downtown about the hidden lives of gay and lesbian Orthodox Jews. According to some people, the Jewish law says that I should burn in hell, even though I don't believe in hell. Just like in any other religion, there's a diversity of opinion. If you actually open the Bible, the Torah, it says a man cannot lie with a man as one lies with a woman or whatever, you know, which is basically a prohibition on, on gay male sex. And that was later interpreted to mean that can't have lesbian sex either. I can't believe a little kid just like tore it down. Did the little kid even know what it said? Like the little I, kid well, didn't even was, read. He was staring at it for about five <laughs> minutes before he went up and he started talking to his mom and his mom was looking at us like, ooh, they're aliens or something. You wanna put it back up again? I think that we should go put it back. Do you wanna go put it back up? Why not? Okay, let's go put it back up. Let's throw it up there. Up to her bat mitzvah, she did not come out of the closet. Um, there were difficult things behaviorally, but she didn't come out. It was sort of a shock to us. Here was a kid who totally fit in at synagogue up to her bat mitzvah. She could read from the Torah, from the Bible, in Hebrew at the drop of a hat. She was the, one of the top students, both in English studies and Hebrew studies. And when she came out of the closet, that's when it all changed. And that makes us very sad. Adina's not mature enough yet to realize that she can be Jewish and also be lesbian. I think she has to find a comfortable place within Judaism without feeling she has to run away from it. And up until now, she's been not just running, I mean, she's been racing away from it. So Adam, you were gonna read your coming out story. Okay. Um, all my life I knew I was different from others, but often found myself craving the positive and negative attention I got from being different. I was a young boy, clueless to what my body and mind was telling For the me. first time in high school, Adam's not afraid to talk openly about himself in front of the other teenagers. Confused wh about why I felt so strongly about boys, I felt like a beach ball being thrown over and over again, not sure when I would drop and who I would be. I think... For all these Triangle has prepared me to realize that this is who I am and to deal with it not in an emotional way, but you know, like I'm proud to be who I am and I'm more of a stronger person. Very quickly after grade eight, and my my body started to m mature, and so did my mind and my perceptions on things. It didn't take me long to realize I was different sexually, physically, and mentally, and felt things most of my friends didn't. It was time for me to step up and acknowledge the person I had become. I remember going to a good friend's place of mine and I was ready to share my little secret with her, a secret I had fought with for so many years. I arrived at her house later that night. We got into a really deep conversation and that's where I finished it. Oh. <laughs> you knew that was coming though. It's a good story. Thanks. I think you've done a really nice job with it. It's a real process, so yay for you. 
Richard's big moment Listen. finally arrives. <laughs> I feel like I'm walking into a church. <laughs> I'm so scared. Okay, let me breathe into my nose. This is Pierre. That's Bill. Pierre! Hi. Did I ever meet you before? No, we haven't yet, sir. Well, you're lucky. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> sir, I gotta go with that man. I don't got his freaking head. What's the matter with you, boy? Oh, my Jeez, God. Me. Sir? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to find something good? Come on, please. I don't object to gays getting together, promoting good welfare. Yeah. And I don't object to two gay people living together, doing their own thing together. What do you think the, uh, about, like, gay marriages? Uh, like, if I ever... I think, like, marriage belongs to a man and woman. And I'm not going to change that. It's not, I'm not homophobic. What's the purpose of marriage? Besides, yeah. you can have sex legally. And just no, just... nobody will call it fornication. <laughs> it's to produce. Life must produce. Otherwise, life becomes extinct. No, I don't think it's right. If you're gonna get married to a guy, don't tell me about it. Why? Because you know me, I'll flip. Why would you flip, though? Because I think it's disgusting. What's disgusting about it? Do I go and freak out when I see two straight people getting married? That's different, Richard. Why? Because it's accepted Because two straight get Because two straight people aren't sticking their dicks up. Sorry. Marriage isn't, <laughs> marriage isn't about, like, sexual whatever, Mom. It it's isn't. Just, sorry. My opinion is disgusting. And yeah, I gotta admit, it does freak me out. Why does it why freak I don't you out? That's why I don't talk about it too much. That's why I keep it in sight. Because it's disgusting. It's graduation day at Triangle. But for Adina, something more significant has already happened. I couldn't go to Adina's graduation. I had a really bad day with my neck. And we wanted at least one parent to be there for Adina. And believe me, my husband was not pleased about being the representative of the family. The Student of the Year Award this year, for the first time, is going to two people. So could Adina come forward, please? When he did go, he saw that the Triangle program was such an awesome program and that gay and lesbian people don't have to be so different from everybody else. I'm reading a bit from a story I wrote called How Love Came to Be. Once the earth, heavens, and creatures had been created, the goddess decided that something was missing. So she came up with a solution. She created love. So the goddess called all of the chemists in the heavens to her chambers to help them concoct the love potion. Sure enough, the powder did create love. Humans were chasing each other, full of lust. They lusted after every kind of creature. The goddess was upset. This isn't what I wanted, she yelled. I wanted love, not just lust. So the goddess kicked everyone out of the lab and shut herself in for 49 days. On the 50th day, she opened the door and wearily walked out, holding a jar of a pink gas. Humans started to feel attraction to each other. Mothers and daughters, sons and fathers, and other relatives felt inexplicable deep emotional bonds with each other. Men and women, women and women, and men and men felt not just lust, but love for each other. True unbakable relationships now existed on Earth. When he came back home, he was almost in tears. It allowed him to relate to Adina much more than he had. And he still talks about him moving. That whole graduation program was. I mean, I wish there could be a graduation program every month. It would keep him going. <laughs>
A phone call changes everything for Richard when his boyfriend, Pierre, decides to end the relationship. I said it's sensing from him that like he wasn't taking my calls at the time and he was lying and stuff. I'm like, do you really want a relationship? And he's like, well, I just want to keep everything on like a down low for now. I don't mind just having like sex and feeling around once in a while. But when it comes to being committed, he's like, I'm not ready for that. I feel kind of disappointed, but I really do feel as I need like somebody to be in my life to, to experience things with me and so like I can love and they can love me back. Lately it's just been really confusing. It's a lot in question now about love, about everything. But the night holds some nasty surprises. A spiked drink, and suddenly Richard is caught in an ugly spiral into darkness. When he bought me a drink and there was no cap on it, I should have at least suspected something. I totally blacked out. I remember he went into my pocket to get the money and he paid for me and him to go in the bathhouse. But I remember opening my eyes when I was in the bed, and this guy I don't even know is having sex with me. I don't know if I would call it rape. A lot of people said it was, but I think it's just like a harsh word to use. I remember going home, and I just took a bath, and I started crying, I started bawling my eyes, and I'm like, oh my god, how can I put myself in a position like this? Adina is going to be going to synagogue for the first time in close to a year and a half. Up until now, my husband had totally banned her from synagogue, but I think it shows a real shift in his attitude and his fear of how people will react. Even though she's the rabbi's daughter, he's willing to take the chance that the people at the synagogue also accept her for who she is. With Judaism in general, even if I don't agree with all the doctrine and all of the rules and the laws that are supposedly from God, I believe in a God. I guess I appreciate the culture and the tradition of Judaism, if not all of the religious aspects. So it's not that easy just to give it up. I need help. Oh, okay. Um, jacket. Whoa. <laughs> what? This is the big deal, huh? I know. Oh my God. When's the last time I ever wore this thing? Like, I, I've never seen him wear it. Adina refers to her father using the traditional Hebrew name, Abba. He's offered her his own tuxedo for prom night. Which color? I have no clue which color to use. Adina Whoa. decided that she really wanted to go back to the Triangle program next year, and she was so happy there. Both Phil and I accepted that maybe that's the best place for her next year. You know, it seems to give her a lot of meaning. Okay, that works, right? Adina, you're going to look like a knockout. Whoa! Look at you. You're, you're such a loser. No, you know what? It actually looks great. Hey, you're a loser with it. It's true, too. I can give a hard time to compliments, huh? But you look great. You're going to be great at the prom. Okay, thank you. Going to go for prom, prom king? 
Yeah. Great. Hey, great. Great. You never can mother. take a compliment. Well, right. we're really proud of you. And you know what? What? Your other's also really proud. I know. <laughs> This year's theme for Pride is uncensored. And it means the freedom to walk down the street holding hands, the freedom to kiss whomever you want, and the freedom to go to the prom with whomever you want. Okay, this is what you've all been waiting for. Ready? For King, we have... Adina! Adina! Come on, Adina! Come on, Adina, congratulations! Woo! Woo! Things have changed so much. I'm, I'm really happy. I'm, me and my mother still fight occasionally, but it's, you know, normal mother-daughter stuff. I have lots of friends and I feel really accepted and, you know. Your king and queen, Adina and Flo. And with my father. We started to talk a lot more again now. He says he loves me and, you know, he wants me to be happy. So, it's a lot better now. My life is great. It's been four months since Richard dropped out. But he comes back tonight to the safe haven he left behind. So are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, I am actually. Oh. Would you like it more if Pierre was here? Would, honestly. Well, this is something big, you know, in somebody's life. And I feel as though if I'm going to take somebody, it would be you. Because we've been through, like, you know, together. You, like, he doesn't compare nothing, like, when he's beside you. Like, he's nothing. You know what honestly, I mean? you know, I feel the same way about you. Like, nobody. Nobody at all that I know could ever play your shoes. September and a new crop of students. Adina's back, and rumor has it that Richard may come back too, but not Adam. His work at Triangle is over. He's decided to face whatever's in store for him at his new mainstream high school. I'm not even scared about the gay issue, which is funny. I'm so comfortable with that now. I'm just scared about people saying other things, you know? Physical appearance and all that. Which I guess every teenager struggles with, but now I'm at the point where I'm struggling with it because it's starting to bother me. I'm also scared about competition, you know? It's an art school, so I just hope that I'm also really good and they like what I can do, so. I'm going in there to dance and sing. Am I gonna be one of the good dancers or am I gonna be one of the ones that don't get to do anything that's always in the back? Because that's what I want in my head, but I have to think logically that there are really talented kids out there my age, and I may not be number one. That's what I'm really scared of.